Hey Internet, it's RJ. Welcome back. Thanks for tuning into the show today. Now, if you're a frequent flyer of the channel, then you know I like a good sign-up bonus, whether it be for a credit card or bank account. In fact, when you talk about bank accounts, I've opened about 15 or 20 throughout the course of the year hunting down these bonuses, and I have a personal goal to make $10,000 of bank's money into my money over the course of the year. And I was cruising towards this goal, no problem, and then all of a sudden, I started to get denied for checking and savings accounts. That's right. You know you could actually get denied denied for a new checking or savings account? Well, if you didn't, I've got the proof in the mail right here. We've got three denial letters that just came in over the past few weeks. And this is all resulting from something called the check system, something that you might not be familiar with. So on today's show, we're going to talk about the check system, what it is, how it works, what you need to know about it, why you should care, and then stick around to the end because at the end of the video, I'm going to go through some story times. We'll talk about some of these denial letters, and I'll talk to you about my check, my personal checks report, my check score, and then I'll tell you the story of how I actually got into a bank and then thrown out of a bank like in the span of two days. So if that sounds interesting to you, go ahead, press the subscribe button, let's get to work. Okay, so first up, what is a checks report? Well, for credit products, credit cards, home loans, auto loans, we're very familiar with the credit score, the FICO credit score and credit report. That's what financial institutions use to make a lending decision. However, when it comes to bank accounts, checking and savings, those are deposit accounts. As a result, there's no credit being lent. So those institutions in that case, when you're submitting an application, they don't bother, generally bother, that is, with a hard pull on your credit score. Now, they might do a soft pull to verify your information, but there's not a hard pull where they're going to bring in a full credit report, things like that, to make a decision. Instead, what financial institutions do when you're applying for a bank account is they use something called the check system. So let's talk about what the check system is. So check system is a banking reporting agency that collects information about your previous issues and dealings with deposit accounts, so checking and savings accounts. And what checks does is they maintain a report of your banking activity and history. So this encompasses any dealings you've had with banks or credit unions. And then in turn, banks can use this checks report and checks score to make a decision on if they're going to open a brand new account for you or not. And of course, the check system does have a score and is between 100 to 899. The higher the score, generally the more safer of a option you are as a client. Okay, now let's take a look at how check system works during the application process. So just like a credit card application, you're still basically required to fill out the exact same information when opening a checking or savings account and putting in your application. A reason being is the government really just mandates that these financial institutions collect this information. It's part of the know your customer laws that they put in place some time ago to kind of combat terrorism and money laundering and things like that. So anyways, you put in this information, you submit it to the bank, and then the bank has the option to to pull a checks report or checks score on you. Now all banks don't do this, some do, some don't. In my experience, and you'll see this when we get to my checks report, that I've noticed that it's really more prevalent with these smaller financial institutions like your credit unions, though it's not to say some of the bigger banks don't pull them as well, but that's where I've seen it most often. So when the bank pulls your check score, they can then use this information to make a decision on if they want to open up an account with you or they're gonna go ahead and deny you, which, you know, does happen apparently. So that being said, what information is checks actually tracking? Well, primarily checks is taking a look at your banking activity as far as accounts you've opened and closed and the reasons behind account closures. So specifically involuntary closures, so if the bank decides to shut you down, bounce checks, overdraft fees, unpaid negative balances, account or ATM abuse, fraud or identity theft, and of course the number of accounts opened over time. Can you ever guess which one might affect my check score going forward? Now the info they track isn't limited to that, but those are going to be the highlights of things checks is most interested in and the ones that are going to have the biggest impact on your checks report and your checks score. So let's talk about why these things are risky to banks. Well, first of all, I think negative balances, balance checks are pretty self-explanatory in the sense they just don't want you to end up leaving the bank owing them a balance and them being stuck with it. Now, how does this happen? If you have overdraft fees, so a lot of accounts, for example, they charge account minimums and things like that. I just got done with a fifth third account that actually charged you $3 to ACH money to yourself. So if you end up incurring some of these fees, your balance goes negative and then you just never pay it or you shut down the account, then that's going to count as a negative balance. And obviously a new bank doesn't even want to be bothered with that if they know this account is going to end up costing them money potentially in the long run. So now the other interesting one and the one that's probably going to affect me, me their most on my report is 
why would a bank care how many accounts you've opened in X amount of time? I mean, this is basically sounding a lot like Chase 524, except with 524, we understand why it's risky because they're still lending you money, but there's no lending going on here. So why would banks care how many accounts you open? Well, this is not necessarily like the definitive answer, but what, from what I can gather here, when you're talking about depositing money into a bank, right, there's rules around that. So let's just say I have $10,000. I want to deposit it into a bank, right? The bank is is required when you put in ten thousand dollars to fill out a specific form and send that off to the IRS and basically what they're doing is saying hey there's a large sum of money we just took on deposit we don't know where this came from so that form the customer has to fill out part of it and it makes the customer disclose where this ten grand came from now with most people dealing with that much cash it might not be that hard to disclose where the money came from right but if you don't want to do this then you could also think, hey, well, what if I just put in five grand today and five grand tomorrow? Well, you can't do that either because that's called structuring and then that will also trigger the form to go to the IRS and then you're probably gonna get in trouble. And it's a long story, but it works really weird. Basically, the IRS can just take your money and you have to prove that it was not through nefarious means. So what other people have thought about doing is opening up multiple bank accounts across multiple banks. I can put in 10 grand in Bank of America, 10 grand in US Bank, Chase and Wells. You get the point. And then to my knowledge, these banks don't really talk to each other, so that still works and allows you to do that. So banks don't really want to be associated with that. Banks are also, they don't really know why you're opening as many accounts. There's no context behind it. They're just like, whoa, that's a lot of accounts. I don't know. I don't want to deal with it, right? And so that's kind of what's happening here. That's how it makes you a little bit more risky in their eyes. So with that said, let's say you reach out and you get your check score and it, your score is lower than you would like. Well, what can you do about that? Well, there's a few different things here. So first of all, this doesn't necessarily mean you're locked out of ever having a bank account again. There are such things as second chance accounts, and those are kind of like your credit builder cards in a sense to draw a parallel. Um, so those are for you know folks who may have a negative checks marks on their report. Now, additionally, if you're going through bank accounts at my pace, then you can definitely just take a pause on it and slowly some of those openings will fall off just like a credit report would. Now it is important to note here, checks report does not affect your credit score. They are two separate things. FICO and checks do not talk. One is about credit lending, one is about just opening deposit accounts. So just important to note that as well. And additionally, I've also noticed that business accounts, business banking accounts, they seem to be a lot less sensitive to this as well. So again, if you're bonus hunting like I am, you could take a pause on personal and switch to maybe some business accounts, which generally offer higher sign up bonuses as well. Okay, so that was everything you needed to know about checks. Now let's transition to the story time part of this for those who are interested. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk through some of these denial letters here. These are what kind of triggered the entire video, and I'll just screenshot them and put them on screen so you can take a look. Um, but first of all, we've got Merck and Sharp here. See, they're a credit union, and you can see right here I've highlighted, you know, denial of application. And then if you go to page number two, you can see right there up top it says name of consumer agency, and that is the check system and they have the website for checksystem.com so interesting enough they didn't list any information here but they're just saying hey they made the decision based on checks now in a second we'll actually take a look at my checks report but this is the funny story here so what you have on screen now is a letter from Monify Bank and Monify was offering a very lucrative sign up bonus I think it was about 200 or 250 dollars so I signed up for them got accepted got in opened the account and then two days later I tried to log into my account to get my account information to plug into the HR system and I couldn't get in at all so I phoned them up I have face ID to get in so I knew I didn't forget my password I phoned them up and basically the rep and basically the rep just read to me something that was quoted in the account but he said hey we've exercised our right to end our banking relationship to protect Monify Bank because this could be potentially risky so so again, that goes kind of to the checks report of, hey, they see a lot of openings and they don't really know what's going on, so the bank would rather just not deal with it. With that being said, last piece of this, actually taking a look at my checks report. So I'll put this front page on screen right now. So you can see here, I blacked out some of the stuff, but you can see the date score was created June 3rd. And the score again is from 100 to 899. So you can see here the score is 0596, which I assume means 596 out of 899, which is not great by any means. Um, and then as you go down to the bottom, you can see the reason codes. You can see recent, recent unique data inquiry history, insufficient data inquiry active, same, and then time since data inquiry activity. I'd be honest with you, I don't know what all those mean. 
2018, but we can see the recent unique data history inquiry is probably the one that they're talking about where I've opened up a ton of accounts. And what also you have on screen now is a copy of the checks report. Now mine's much, much longer than this, but I'm just putting up the first page so you can get the point here. So you can see May 23rd, that was Premier Members Credit Union. They denied me Merck and Sharp May 22nd. They said no. Mid First Bank, I, I don't remember if they said yes or no. Boeing Employees Credit Union, they definitely said no. Axos said yes. Alliant was in March. Citibank was in March as well. So there is a bigger bank pulling checks. This doesn't include every bank that I've applied for, if we're being honest. I can go put up my spreadsheet so you guys can see the lineage of what I've been applying for. So that just goes to show you not every bank pulls from the check system. Now, overall, what does this all mean? Does it really matter? I think you should care about it, but Truth be told, to be honest with you guys, is this going to change my behavior from bonus hunting and signing up for banks? Absolutely not. I mean, I have a home-based bank, right? I use Chase and Ally as my, what I call hub bank, where I get my paychecks through most of the time and then flow money through, and then I just go out and sign up for other banks and get the direct deposit bonuses and things like that. So I'm not really worried about not having a banking home or anything like that. You know, existing banks, Ally and Chase, aren't going to throw you out all of a sudden because of this. Um, so I, I think it does matter to a degree, um, but I'm not overly concerned about it. I'm going to keep applying and try to hit this $10,000 goal I have for the year. But anyways, if you guys are interested, let me know down below what you think. Are you surprised I've been thrown out of this many banks? Are you surprised that your boy scores like in the middle there as a result of all these applications? And if you are in the bank account bonus hunting game, are you going to go and check your own check score and see where you're at? But anyways, guys, if you like this one, drop me a thumbs up down below. If you found it particularly interesting, consider subscribing to the channel. Posting content just like this every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and with a Sunday recap episode that has all the news you could use for the week that was. Anyways, guys, that's going to do it for this one. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll talk to you in the next one.